Hi, it's Book Chick, and I am here to tell you about my January TBR, finally. I know we're already, uh, like, eight days in, but here we are. Um, I apologize for the video quality. I need to figure out how to change the settings on my iPhone so that it doesn't lock on me, like, every five minutes. I've, like, messed with the settings, and I thought I had it, but it still locks, um, like, every five minutes or so, and it's really annoying, so... I don't know, I'll either have to, like, edit, um, all those different clips together or just, uh, figure out a different way. So, but today, you're on my laptop again. So, but anyway, let's get into it. So, this is my January TBR. Um, I'm already reading these, obviously, but I wanted to tell you about them. If you follow me on my Instagram, which is book at bookchick2020, then, um, you've seen my January TBR, but if you aren't following me, go ahead and do that. That'd be really awesome. Um, but without further ado, let's get into it. Um, so the next book that I'm reading, which I'm already technically reading, um, this has actually been on my, uh, shelf, my TBR shelf since this summer. I've just had a really hard time getting into it, but it's Paris by Edward Rutherford. It's really good. It's just, a trunker, which I didn't used to have a problem with. Like, I have books on my shelf that are, like, close to a thousand pages long. No issue when I was a teenager. But now I have, like, a social life and, um, a job and a house to run. So, there's that. Um, but no, this is really good. It's set, um, in Paris, obviously, but it's set throughout, like, different time periods. So, it's, like, constantly flipping back and forth. Um, like, I think the previous chapter was, like, 1241, and now it is about to start 1885, so I've been listening to this, um, via audiobook and, like, just kind of moving my bookmark along, and, uh, when I get the chance, I will, like, pick it up and read it physically, but for now that that is, like, the perfect way to read it is through audiobook because I'm actually making some progress now, and it's really interesting, and also, like, obviously a lot of the names are French or some other European nationality and I don't know how to like read them so hearing them will help me um like process what I'm reading in the book so that'll be really good um but this is uh, how long is this yeah this is close to a thousand pages so it's like 800 and something so because I am an adult now. Um, I will be listening to the audiobook and following along. But the next book that I'll be reading is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I'm trying to be really good and read more classics this year. Isn't this just a, a beautiful edition? It's kind of, I don't know, you probably can't see because of the terrible video quality, but it's kind of like a yellowy green color and then the words are like royal blue. Um, this came from Blackwell Books, but it is gorgeous. Um, my husband got this for me for Christmas, so I love it. Um, but, and now I can give the copy that I borrowed from my best friend back to her. So I'll be reading this as well, but if you don't know, um, what Pride and Prejudice is, for some reason, also, like, the end papers are purple, like, bright purple. Um, but basically we're following a family who has five daughters, and they're all of an eligible age to be married. Now, keep in mind, this is, like, a little bit before turn of the century, so age to be married, like, eligible age to be married was quite a bit younger than it is now. Um, like, they're teenagers. Um, but basically, the mother is trying to marry off all five daughters, um, within the year to good good, honorable men who have, like, enough money to support them for the rest of their lives, um, so you, but, like, she's very much a matchmaker, so, because that was just kind of how it was then, not that that's not a thing now, um, but yeah, so she's trying to find them, like, suitable husbands who, like, will treat them well and, like, be able to support them, and, uh, you can imagine the escapades, uh, that that causes, like, it's, it's just the whole thing, this book is full of drama and family betrayal, and just, but also it's set, um, like, in a different century, so, like, there are all these beautiful descriptions of dresses and balls and 
the way that the men dress, and it's just. Mm -hmm. If you are watching Bridgerton and you haven't read this, you should read through this because I bet you'll like it. But yeah, you'll probably also like A Rogue of One's Own because I do, and I'm loving Bridgerton right now. So you should check it out. The next book that I'm reading is also borrowed from Kinsey. Um, it is The Princess Bride by William Goldman. Um, this is also a movie. If you haven't seen the movie, definitely watch the movie. But um, I kind of wish that I had read the book first so that I was a child when I saw the movie, like little, little. So that wasn't really a, a possibility. Um, but now I'm going to read it. I'll probably, I might do a comparison of like, is the book better than the movie or vice versa? Um, but we'll have to see how that goes. Um, but I'm super, super excited for this. I want to know if it's as good as the movie. Um, as funny as the movie. Um, because the movie is very, like, knights in shining armor. Uh, like, Zorro kind of, like, sword fights and pirates and all that kind of stuff. Like, but satirical like it's very funny so excited to read this so I will let you know what I think I'm gonna have to split this video in two once again um but yeah if you liked this video go ahead and hit like and subscribe apparently um about 50% of my viewers are not subscribed so if you're watching this go ahead and double check that you are subscribed and um I'll see you again so Thank you. Bye, bookworms.